I've been using a 3D scanner to help me design a custom wide body kit and make an intake manifold for my turboed Honda Beat. And a lot of you guys asked to see my design process. So I'm gonna show you how I use a 3D scan of the frunk to design a custom strut tower bar mount and then make it in real life. Thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. More on them later. For the past several months, I've been using the Einstar Vega. It's an all-in-one scanner and I made a dedicated video going over the features and I'll link it in the description so you can check it out later. For the purposes of this video, I'm gonna skip the 3D scanning workflow and jump right into Autodesk Fusion. Once it's loaded up, I'm gonna insert mesh and open up the 3D scanned STL file. I'll click center and move to ground, then hit OK. This mesh has a lot of data, and you can see all of the fine details, which is great, but it slows down the computer a lot, so I'm gonna reduce the mesh. Most of the time, you can reduce it down quite a bit without losing any detail, and you can dial in the proportions to whatever works best for you. Some 3D scanning software may not have three-point alignment capability, but luckily, Fusion included a mesh align feature not too long ago, and you can get the mesh aligned to the coordinate system pretty closely. Basically, you can click a face, and I'm going to choose a spot on top of the core support. Then choose the plane you want to align it to, and in this case, I'm going to choose the XY plane. And then repeat the steps for the other two planes, and then you have it aligned. You can use the move command to make minor adjustments and dial in the position. And for this project, this is good enough. Then I go into direct edit mode and then draw a plane on the struct tower using the plane through three points feature. I like to choose points as far apart as possible in order to get a plane that normalizes or averages the variations of the surface over a larger area. Then I use the plane to create a mesh section sketch. There's an arrow handle that allows you to change where the slice happens normal to the plane and I want to get the location of the studs and the center opening. Once I hit OK, it creates a sketch, which I can then go into and edit. The mesh section is just a reference geometry, so you can't get dimensions or snap lines or curves onto them. So here's how you get usable data out of this. Under the Create menu, there's a Fit Curves to Mesh Section feature. There are different fit curve types, and you can choose the one that give you the best result. Some are intuitive like the circle option, and I can use this one for one of the mounting holes. And it defines the center point and circle with a max curve deviation of half a millimeter, which is good enough for this project. Since the other features didn't capture a complete circle, I'm gonna use the arc option and grab as much information as possible. Once I'm happy with the selection, I could finish the sketch and then create a new one on the same plane. I can now project those curves and use them as references. And then I'll start drawing out the general shapes using a center point circle. I'm going to estimate the dimension of the center opening to be slightly larger than the projected arc. I'll verify the clearances once I'm happy with the general shape. I know the bounding studs are M12s, so I'm going to make the holes 13 millimeters in diameter to have proper clearance. And then I'll just add some material around the holes. Then I'll draw a little ledge and bring back the mesh for reference to make sure it's pointed in the right direction. Now that I have a general shape roughed in, I'll extrude it and check it on the mesh to see if there's any interference using the suction analysis tool. Important to make sure the basic design clearances are good at this point, it's also worth noting other components around the strut tower that might get in the way of the connecting bar when we start designing the final shape. Once I cut away the profile, I can see a little interference at the center opening. So I'm going to edit the sketch and make the center hole about half a millimeter larger and that should be plenty of clearance. To make sure this works in real life before working on the final design, I send the solid model to the slicing program. So I could print it out on my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. To save a little bit of time and filament during this prototyping phase, I just print a few layers by pausing where I want it. And when it's done, I just cancel the rest of the print.
the print quality on this one looks a little crummy because I didn't dry the filament, but the fitment looks good to me so I can start working on the final design. I'm going to speed through it because once you get the critical dimensions dialed in, everything around it is up to your imagination. And this is what I ended up with. The other side will just be a mirrored copy and they'll be connected together with a 1 inch tube. I'll test fit this design with another 3D print and make any incremental changes that's needed. For the final version, I'm going to get it CNC machined in 6061 aluminum from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. They offer a bunch of services like 3D printing, injection molding, and my favorite, CNC machining. All you need to do is upload the 3D file of your final design, choose from a wide selection of materials and surface finishes, and you can also specify any special processes like tapped holes or additional quality control, and then request a quote. Currently, PCBWay is celebrating their 11-year anniversary, and you can take advantage of the sale using the link in the description. The turnaround time is pretty quick. These mounts only took a couple of weeks from the order date to arriving right in front of my door. I love the raw tooling marks on the surface and they fit just like 3D prints, so I'm confident they'll fit perfectly. Now all I need to do is weld the 1 inch 2 onto the mount and spend some time cleaning it up because I'm a terrible welder. And this is the final product. This was a simple project showing the steps using a 3D scan to design and make a functional part. I hope you found this video helpful, and if I missed anything or if you have any suggestions for improvements, let me know down in the comments. Also, be sure to subscribe and like this video so we can make the algorithm gods happy, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.